Hi guys, this video is about the electric highway announcement that they're now going to charge in a different way for using their rapid charge at the service stations. Now I'll just briefly go through the email um, just in case you haven't seen it so you know what I know and this is the uh, email they've sent around to all their customers basically stating how it's going to work. Almost a year ago we introduced charging for charging after being free to use for five years. At the time we had limited options for the basis of that charging and opted for six pounds for 30 minutes as the best one size fits all that we could offer. We said at the time that we would monitor use of the highway, use that data and customer feedback and produce a more sophisticated approach to charging as soon as we could. We've done that now. The new model that we've developed will give more flexibility and typically lower charging costs across all makes and models. The main issue we've been wrestling with is the fixed time period charging and the different amounts of energy that various models can use in that time. Coupled with the need to reflect in the pricing model the costs of installing and running the infrastructure, not just the cost of energy. To better balance these issues, we are separating the cost of energy from the cost of providing the service. The energy will be charged at 17p per unit, which is pretty much the rate that people pay at home and the cost of providing the service will be via a three pound connection fee for all sessions. In our modeling, this will typically lower the cost of charging for all makes and models, as well as charge more proportionally for energy taken. We've also increased the maximum length of charging sessions to 45 minutes to offer greater flexibility to those customers who need a bit longer to charge up. For ecotricity customers, there will be no connection fee to reflect that our customers' energy bills help us build this network. Our new approach will operate from the 26th of June. So this is what a lot of people have been asking for, to be fair. Uh, charging per unit of electricity rather than just a flat fee. Uh, it's something that uh, has been kind of the main bugbear for a lot of people out there. So I'm not sure why it's taken them nearly 12 months to implement. Is this a positive move? And I would say overall, yes it is. Uh, charging per unit of electricity is far uh, well, fairer than, than charging for a flat rate. Uh, for those that don't know why, basically, let's imagine car A can pull in 30 kilowatt hours of energy and car B can pull in the full 50 that the charger can operate. In 30 minutes, obviously, one car will be getting more electricity than other cars, so it was unfair on some cars that they were getting less for the same amount of money, six pounds, another one so this is definitely a fair way of doing it and it, it makes sense so is this better value now a lot of people are comparing the electric highway against the previous charging scheme six pound for 30 minutes and that's not the way we should be looking at this we should be comparing this against other charge networks in the uk there's no point in comparing the electric highway to itself to its previous charging scheme let's see what it's like against other networks and i'm going to pick probably the biggest around, um, the Polar Plus, which is a slightly different way of doing it. They have a membership scheme. For those that don't know, very briefly, you pay £7.85 per month, and then you can access their charge network at a cheaper rate. They do have a Polar Instant way of doing it via an app, but I'm gonna concentrate on the membership because it's probably the closest comparison I can do, given the fact that Ecotricity have the connection fee. Now, I'm going to take a journey that I do on a semi-regular basis down to my parents. I live in North Yorkshire, they live in Essex. Uh, so it's about 260 odd miles each way for me to do. And if I leave uh, from both ends with 100%, I need to charge twice en route to get there. Uh, and I'm going to compare it against Polar Plus. I'm then going to compare it against uh, a Splash and Dash, as it's called, just a quick charge, just to see whether or not this is a uh, good value compared to other charge networks. So, if I go down to my parents using electricity under this new scheme, uh, which means two full charges en route each way, then it would cost me around £25.60 to complete that journey, that's there and back. Which, compared to a petrol or diesel car, which typically cost me 60, 70, 80 pounds, depending on obviously how frugal that car is, it's still good, it's still, uh, you know, it's half the price at least, so that's not too bad. But let's imagine for a second that Polar have their own rapid charge points in the same spots, the service areas that Ecotricity did. How much would it cost me using the Polar Plus? Well, again, if I went down south and back and did two full charges en route each way, then with Polar Plus and the full month's membership, it will cost me £15.05p. On that basis, they're, they're, they're 
ten pound dearer or electric highway than Polar Plus. You can just go for a month with Polar Plus. You don't have to sign up for twelve months or anything. So it's it, it's not a, the greatest comparison because obviously a monthly membership versus a, a connection fee and no sign up process is a bit different. But if Polar can do it and operate, do that journey for fifteen pounds, Ecotricity is twenty five pounds. That suddenly looks like it's not good value and of course I've got another I've got the rest of the month to use on the polar network uh, I can use their fast chargers for free for example so that's quite a difficult one uh, in theory I could pay for two months polar plus membership and it would still be cheaper just for that single trip than using the electric highway polar plus I guess use any electricity whereas Ecotricity use their own green electricity um, so I don't know if you're paying premium for that greenness. Anyway, let's let, let's let's skip skip ahead and do the splash and dash comparison. If you just wanted to plug in for a little bit, and let's say you're taking just five kilowatt hours of energy, so you know a, a splash and dash again. Uh, on the electric highway, you've got the three pound connection fee and 17p per unit, so that would come out at three pound eighty five for that 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 brief rapid charger. Polo is a little different for this because. If you were already a member, it would cost you 45 pence for the same energy rather than £3.85. However, if you're not a member, you'd have to pay £7.85 to become one for that month and then you pay the 45p. So I guess it depends on whether or not you're going to use a membership scheme or not. So, I mean, overall, I guess if I were to really compare it, I would say that Polar is significantly cheaper than the electric highway to use. But there is kind of one big caveat in that. Polar may indeed be cheaper, but as they're not in the locations you would typically want them to be in, the motorway service areas, you don't really have a choice to use them. Now, for those that don't know, the electric highway has some sort of exclusivity deal with all the motorway service areas, uh, in England at least, so you have no choice but to use the electric highway along the strategic road network of the UK. The uh, service areas are dotted at points that make sense to stop at, certainly for an electric car, but they are along the motorways, which if you're going any distance, you pretty much have to use. So given the, this exclusive access, you have little choice but to use the electric highway. Now, some people will be saying, well, Tesla are in service areas, and you are correct, but as far as I can tell, that only happened after some out-of-court settlement between Ecotricity and Tesla, so that's not going to happen with any other network. I think the best way of looking at this is that if other charge networks were allowed in the service areas then almost everyone would be using them before the electric highway, mainly due to cost and ease of use. And it's kind of a shame really because they've done an awful lot for EV adoption in this country. They, they, they were the first to do the rapid charges. So I don't know the best way of saying it, they've kind of become the blackberry of the EV charging world of the electric highway. Everybody used to really like them, they used to offer something unique, but now other companies have kind of caught up and then surpassed them in what they do. For me, the electric highway is only in use because of this exclusive deal. If they didn't have that, then they wouldn't be used any longer because they don't have better customer service than anyone else. It's not bad, but it's certainly not better than anyone else. They're not cheaper than anyone else, that's for sure. And they're not easier to use because they're forced you to use this bloody app. Just to highlight the ridiculousness of the app situation, which has always bothered me from day one, you cannot charge on the electric highway if you do not have a smartphone, or if you do have a smartphone, it needs to be either an Android or an Apple smartphone. So if, for example, you don't have a smartphone, you have to ring them up if you want to charge your car. However, they only open 8 till 8 Monday to Friday and 9 till 5 on Saturday. So if you don't have a smartphone or a non-Android Apple smartphone and want to use their network on a Sunday or at night, you can't. You are literally excluded from a strategic road network fueling solution. Can you imagine if Shell made it so you had to use an app to put fuel in your car? No one would use them anymore, would they? Look at it that way. If it was on normal fuel, there would be hell on, people would be kicking off, it would be stopped. But because electric cars are still a niche thing, they can get away with it, it seems. And that is what is pissing me off, quite frankly. I would like to state quite publicly that I am not anti-ecotricity. As a utility company, they are a great force for good in this country. Brilliant, in fact. 
but electric highway fall below the standards other networks have proven to be possible and they're not the cheapest so they're not going down the budget angle either so what do they offer other than this exclusive access compared to other people and there's the problem for me they don't offer anything unique they don't offer anything that's cheaper than anyone else and they don't offer anything that's better than anyone else so at the moment they're a static company they're not doing anything that they didn't do years ago when they were charging nothing for it so yes overall it is a positive move this is better than the shambles that they were charging before six pound for a set time fee for whatever reason it was done should never have happened everyone was dead set against it from day one and it's taken them 12 months to change that but again overall it's a better move this is better than it was before but better doesn't mean suitable or good so please let me know i'm sure there will be different opinions on here i always get uh, some usual abuse from uh, the ecotricity fanboys out there i have nothing against ecotricity as i've said before but i do not think the light shines out of their ass there are other companies that do green electricity there are other companies that do charge networks that is what you need to compare them against other competitors not themselves they had no one to compete against them when they started out so there was no real difference in service or difference in costs because obviously they didn't charge now they are charging they need to compete on other levels service cost value all that so thanks for watching this please let me know in the comments below what you thought and i'll see you soon